Dan, you walked in here, sat down on set, and said there's nothing good about this Tesla quarter. Yeah, it's hilariously bad. I mean, there's really, I, it, it's really hard to find anything that's good about this quarter. And I'll bring you back to early June when, you know, Tesla diverted, you know, 500 million um, high-end GPUs from them to XAI. And if you think about RoboTaxi, yeah, they pushed out that event from early August, right, to, you know, October. That probably gets pushed out there. To your point, Mel, it seems like some of the commentary feels like it's not coming. But when I think about this as an $800 billion market cap, and you look at the fundamentals of the actual EV business, you say to yourself, there's something way offside. So you better be into RoboTaxi. You better be into humanoid robots. You better be into supervised full self-driving. It's not full self-driving anymore. They have to call it supervised, right? And that keeps getting pushed out. And the other point I'll just say is that, listen, they have like low single digits percentage of Tesla owners who actually subscribe to full self-driving, right? And so if you think about their push towards lower end cars, do you think if you're buying a $25,000 EV that you're going to spend $10,000 on full self-driving? No. So, like, to me, I think all those things are wrapped up in that valuation. And after the stock has rallied 80 percent off those recent lows, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, it's never made a lot of sense mm -hmm. here. But the point I'll leave you guys with is the fundamentals of this company are really bad. And the things that people are buying the stock for are way in the offing. This guy has never delivered on any timeline. I don't know why you would expect him to do so right now, because he seems busy doing a whole host of other things. Hilariously bad. That's a, that's the first time I've heard that term here. Mm -hmm. So look, it's to me, it's always a margin story. So 20% of their gross profits came from regulatory credits. It was 12% in the first quarter. So when you do the back of the envelope math, it suggests that margins actually were about 14.6%, and the street was looking for north of 16 and a half. So if it's a margin story, the margins continue to deteriorate. And given the fact that the stock has just gone up basically 90%, from those recent lows, it suggests to me that it's probably that's not my phone. Not I'm, my phone. I'm, I'm just no saying. Phone I looked set. at Tim. No, phone no on phones set. on yes. set. Thank you. Suggests Nobody to me the here. stock is Thank too you. rich here. So I'm, you know, I don't. I wouldn't say hilariously bad, but I think the stock should be sold here. Well, maybe bad considering the climb. Right, and what people Great Miley wanted. Cyrus song, as you Here. know. I know it's, it's on my Spotify playlist, The Climb. One of two Miley mm -hmm. Cyrus songs, by the way. All right. Back to you. Anyway, to let's, let's keep moving from my. So, so <laughs> Phil was talking about caveats, and, and watch what I do here. Caveats in the case of, of, of Tesla have always been caveat emptor, wow. if I may. Uh, nice remember job, that Brady too. Bunch with caveat emptor? I mean, you see, Greg. Yeah. Greg are Again with the phone. That's not <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's people at the NASDAQ. Can hear Where's the Dean of Friedman? For us. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please go on. Okay. Yeah, Even so that is you, a you were asking, right, it was a Brady Bunch where Greg was buying a car and, and, it, and, yeah. and Mike said, and it, no. Anyway. The point is with Tesla, I agree with Dan wholeheartedly on humanoid robots. Uh, suddenly, we're talking about this on a day when sales grew only 2%, profits dropped 45%. This is the problem with Tesla. It's a growth company without the growth. I'm not here to tell you a whole lot more than that. I'm telling you that the valuation makes no sense. And at this point, it's almost absurd that we believe anything Elon says in terms of the timeline for products that may or may not be part of the revenue stream. The revenue stream right now is that they sell cars and, and that ultimately they may have an S FSD uh, high margin dynamic. The analyst community is already pricing that in. They probably should because the margin is basically free money. Mm -hmm. um, and they're usually putting about half 50% of that number into the cars. That's fine. That makes sense. And I would make an argument that if only 9% or so of the people that own it are actually using it, it may mean that there's a lot more to go. But in the meantime, this is a stock that's way too expensive relative to the space at a time when I think all the early adopter stuff, all of the subsidy stuff, uh, the margin profile is something that's under pressure. That's really it. The, I mean, the free cash flow actually came back. So it's not necessarily that horrible burn story. Either way, it was never going to be about solvency, which it really was four or five years ago, if you ask me. But but it's not that issue anymore. I'm just not paying that for this company. Yeah, I mean, on those two issues for full self-driving, they were giving out those free, not samples, but um, so, yeah, 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 like a trial period to anybody right. who wanted the trial period. So they are uh -huh. saying that they are anticipating that full self-driving attach rates will go up. They're also saying that in Q2, EV penetration returned to growth. So if you believe these predictions, maybe we've seen sort of the worst of it in terms of the EV market. Dan is shaking his head, of course. Uh -huh. um, but that's what the company's saying. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he said a lot of things, right? Some of which really came to pass, some of which haven't. I mean, to me, the, they, we did see them sort of facing bankruptcy. Remember that, that tweet of Elon by the side right. of the road with a, you know, a bankrupt sign? But to see the cash at $30 billion, I think that was 
partially because they produced a lot fewer cars than the street expected. So if you're not producing cars, you're not using that money. But um, I, I've also, like the gentleman here, never been comfortable with the valuation at all. Does anyone else get any kind of credit for full self-driving? Right? Do we think about the, in China? Not they do. I mean, not, it's not doesn't exist here. And and the other point so, I'll just mention: last year they had sixty percent market share here in North America, you know, and now that's dropped below fifty percent. So again, you're you're you know a small percentage of the people own the S and the X. Okay, those are the high end cars, and those are the people who are more likely to actually pay for full self driving. So, well, a, a couple other things. I mean, it's interesting the Elon uh, love fest with Donald Trump. Um, you have to assume that this is a somewhat of a quid pro quo for right. some kind of that Tesla uh, somehow uh, going to benefit yes. in some way. Yeah. And okay, that may be putting all of that together. Though I, I'm very skeptical of the humanoid robots being a significant driver of revenue anytime soon. And um, I mean, ultimately, one day full self-driving. But we've been talking about this for a long, long time. Yep. So don't own it.